While modern COD games are busy doing whatever the hell this is, OG COD Zombies was something to be feared. OG COD Zombies was a type of game to make a 10 year old Leon sh bricks, and I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only one still getting nightmares. POV, it's 2007 and you're working for Treyarch. Your company is still cruising high from the release of COD Modern Warfare and you've been put into the terrifying position of making a follow-up game, something capable of surpassing the massive landmark title of COD 4. To do this, you decide to put out one last World War II shooter as an homage to the first three COD games. And while yes, it is quite fun, there wasn't much to distinguish World at War from COD 1, 2, and 3, when out of the blue, a small part of the development team suggests something that would go on to become a mainstay of the COD franchise. Nazi Zombies was a cooperative game mode where players would be trapped in a small arena while fending off ever-increasing waves of zombies. This was done by 1. Shooting them in the face, 2. Building up barricades to slow their advance, and 3. Opening doors to unlock more powerful weapons. It was simple, fun, and boy was it popular, leading to 4 extra DLC zombie maps, each featuring a new and improved layout. The first map featured Verrückt, a map set in a German insane asylum where 4 marines were sent in to extract US spots. By Peter McLean. I hated it, despite the fact that it was the first map to introduce electroshock traps and Perca Cola machines, back when Quick Revive was 1,500 points, and it didn't even revive the player. Shinonuma, a map sent in Imperial Japan, which was to introduce the second wonder weapon. During the later half of the Second World War, the German army became increasingly reliant on their scientists to develop revolutionary new technology, nicknamed wonder weapons. The most famous of these light war inventions was the V2 rocket the first ballistic missile, the Messerschmitt 262, the first fighter jet, and the Sturmgewehr 42, the first assault rifle. The DG-2 Wunderwaffe was a fictional depiction of one of these super weapons, using the mythical element 115 to shoot high energy lightning bolts capable of dispatching multiple soldiers, or in this case, zombies. Fun fact, the spy Peter McLean that the marines went looking for in Verrucht can be spotted hanging from a noose in the spawn area. The last zombies map released was Der Riese, set in the main base of operations of the Nazi scientists used to develop their tech. This introduced teleporters as well as a pack-a-punch machine, which the player could use to upgrade their guns. Objectively, the best zombies map ever made. Fight me. I will die on this hill. Die Rise is the best zombies map NA. But what I'm most interested in is the original Nacht der Untoten, and that's because of its story. You're an Air Force pilot who crashed their B-17 Flying Fortress into the war-torn fields of Germany. Badly wounded and on the brink of passing out, you see distant figures shambling towards you. As you fade in and out of consciousness, you can see a figure running towards you full sprint as his footsteps get louder and louder. And when he gets to you, it's not known what happens to the GI after, but seeing as how we spawn into a bunker with our service pistol out, we can presume that you fought off the zombie before making your way into the destroyed bunker for shelter. You hear distant ghostly screams, and can see zombies come out of the ground coming to attack you. All you can do now is try to survive the onslaught for as long as possible, all while hearing ghostly screams of babies crying, demons shrieking, and cows. For some reason, this simple intro, while only being 30 seconds long, was incredible. The visual storytelling and haunting audio design is very well done, something you're made instantly aware of by the haunting screams of the zombies themselves. <coughs> Unnaturally deep groans mixed with their glowing eyes tells us that something otherworldly is going on. Whatever has gotten a hold of these corpses has turned them from the remains of German soldiers into bloodthirsty, unintelligible monsters, hellbent on your demise. Still wearing their uniforms featuring Nazi and SS insignia, it's clear that these were one of the many dead soldiers of the Third Reich, who had likely been buried at mass graves during the Second World War. As you approach the later rounds, you find that more and more of the slow walking shamblers turn turn into fast moving runners, growing more aggressive and resilient with every round. To counter this threat, the player will have to use points to open doors and unlock new areas. These points are acquired by shooting zombies and repairing barricades. Once you open the first door for 500 points, you're given access to a Thompson, a double barrel 12 gauge, and 4 more points of entry. But the biggest deal of all is a mystery box. The mystery box is a box where any player can gamble 950 points to roll a dice and get a random weapon. These can either be extremely powerful or complete dog <coughs> the Nambu.
They would then be given a short amount of time to grab the gun before the box would swallow the gun whole, stripping players of their potential new gun. In addition to this, Nachto and Toten is the only zombies map not to have a box move or have the chance of rolling the teddy bear. Yet another reason why Nacht is king. The most coveted of the weapons offered by the box is the legendary ray gun, a laser pistol strong enough to blow off limbs, kill hordes of zombies, and the player, if they aren't careful enough. Being developed by Ludwig Maxim of the group 935, it's fed by batteries and makes a distinctive noise when reloaded. Another great weapon is the handheld Browning 1919, which is a belt-fed machine gun equipped with hundreds of spare rounds of the beefy 30 odd 6 There's also the option of unlocking the upstairs, where you can buy a scoped Carnani AK, as well as having a good spot to camp with the ray gun. Besides that, if you head towards the place where you can buy the trench gun, you can also see the plane that you crashed in the intro. From what I can tell, it's a Boeing B-17 bomber. Surrounding the bunker, you can also see Opal Bullets trucks, being the standard light and medium weight trucks for the the German army. Another fun fact about Nacht is that there was going to be an option to mount the browning on the sandbags. Remnants of this feature can be found in Verrucht, where you can mount the bipod on your friend's head. Nacht und Toten was also responsible for the implementation of power-ups that aid the player. This was such an early implementation that instead of using the flashing power-up symbols that we're used to, it straight up tells the player how much time they have left, which I like. Nacht und Toten would go on to be remastered in both Call of Duty Black Ops and Black Ops 3. These remasters would add perka colas, monkey bombs, and the thunder gun. There's also a replica of Nacht that you can find in the cornfields of the Black Ops 2 map, Transit, which is unironically some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. It doesn't have much of anything inside it other than some wonder weapon parts, and you can't open any of the doors to get to any other parts of the map. But I still love that they took the time to add this into the game, which is significantly more than I could say about today's Treyarch. All in all, the Nacht und Toten scenario is a nightmare ripped straight from hell. Imagine you were an Air Force bomber pilot conducting a night raid when your plane malfunctions and crashes into an airbase. Heavily wounded and barely conscious, you're forced to defend yourself from undead zombies that won't stop tearing you or the building you're in to shreds. What would you do if you were in such a position? Me? I'd light a cigarette and try to do my best Kurt Cobain impression. Thanks for watching.